Welcome to the world of extreme sports, where adrenaline junkies push their limits and defy the odds. Today, we're taking you on an icy adventure you won't forget. Join us as we explore the ins and outs of these incredible sports. Number 1. Volcano Boarding Volcano boarding, also known as ash boarding or volcano surfing, is an extreme sport that has gained popularity in the last couple of decades. The sport offers a thrilling combination of speed, adventure, and a unique natural setting. Cerro Negro, the most popular location for volcano boarding, is a young and active volcano in western Nicaragua. It has erupted more than 20 times since its formation in 1850, with the last eruption occurring in 1999. Despite the potential dangers, the volcano's slopes, composed of volcanic ash, small rocks, and cooled lava, make it an ideal spot for this extreme sport. The volcano boarding experience begins with a hike up the steep slopes of Cerro Negro, carrying the specialized board and safety gear. The hike usually takes around an hour, providing participants with breathtaking views of the volcanic landscape and surrounding areas. Once at the top, participants receive a safety briefing and instructions on how to control their speed and direction during the descent. There are two primary techniques for volcano boarding. Standing up. Similar to snowboarding, participants stand on the board with both feet strapped in and use their body movements to control their descent. Sitting down. Resembling tobogganing or sledding, participants sit on the board and use their feet and hands to steer and control their speed. Volcano boarding speeds can reach up to 50 miles per hour, depending on the rider's skill and the conditions on the slope. The descent takes only a few minutes but offers an exhilarating and unforgettable experience. As with any extreme sport, safety is a primary concern. In addition to wearing helmets and goggles, participants are advised to wear long sleeves, pants, and gloves to protect themselves from the abrasive volcanic material. Face masks or bandanas can help protect the mouth and nose from inhaling ash or dust. Despite the precautions, the sport carries inherent risks, such as falling and sustaining injuries from the rough volcanic terrain or the unlikely but possible occurrence of a volcanic eruption. Participants should be aware of these risks and ensure they are prepared, both mentally and physically, before attempting volcano boarding. 2. Underwater ice hockey, also known as sub-aqua ice hockey or upside-down hockey, is an extreme and niche winter sport that combines elements of ice hockey, freediving, and cold water endurance. It originated in the early 2000s in Austria and has since gained a small but dedicated following in several European countries. In underwater ice hockey, two teams compete against each other in a frozen lake or pond, with a playing area typically measuring around 20 by 10 meters. The surface of the ice serves as the floor of the playing field, and players attach themselves to the ice using ice screws and ropes, which help them maintain their upside-down position while playing. The game consists of two five-minute halves, with a short break in between. Teams usually have four players each, including a goalkeeper, though the specific number of players can vary. The floating puck is made of styrofoam or other buoyant materials, and the goals are suspended just below the ice. Players wear wetsuits, gloves, diving masks, and special boots with spikes to help grip the ice. Since the sport is played without oxygen tanks, players must rely on their breath-holding abilities and surface frequently to breathe. This adds an element of strategy to the game, as players must coordinate their breaths and movements to maintain a competitive advantage. Communication between team members is limited, as speaking underwater is nearly impossible. As a result, underwater ice hockey relies heavily on non-verbal communication and teamwork. Players use hand signals and body language to coordinate their movements and strategies. Underwater ice hockey poses several risks and challenges, such as the extreme cold, disorientation, and the potential for injury from collisions with the ice or other players. Participants must be skilled free divers and strong swimmers, as well as experienced in playing ice hockey. Although underwater ice hockey remains a niche sport with a relatively small following, it has attracted attention for its unique blend of athleticism, skill, and novelty. The sport has even spawned several international tournaments, bringing together players from various countries to compete and share their passion for this unconventional and extreme ice sport. 3. Bossa Ball, created by Belgian Philip Eichmanns in 2004, is a dynamic and entertaining sport that combines various athletic disciplines into one fast-paced and acrobatic game. The name, Bossa Ball, is inspired by the Brazilian musical style, Bossa Nova, which sets the rhythm for the game and creates a festive atmosphere. The Bossa Ball Court is a large inflatable surface measuring around 50 by 30 meters, with a trampoline on each side of a centrally placed net. 
The trampolines, called bossa walls, are surrounded by a larger inflatable area, allowing players to bounce, jump, and perform acrobatic moves during gameplay. Bossa ball is typically played with teams of three to five players. The objective of the game is to score points by hitting the ball over the net and making it touch the ground on the opponent's side. There are different ways to score points depending on how the ball is played. Using hands. If a player touches the ball with their hands, similar to a volleyball attack, and it lands on the opponent's side, the team scores one point. Using feet or head. If a player touches the ball with their feet or head, resembling soccer techniques, and it lands on the opponent's side, the team scores three points. Players are allowed a maximum of five touches to return the ball to the opponent's side. Each team can use the trampoline player, who is positioned on the bossa wall, once during each play. This player can perform spectacular jumps and acrobatic moves to attack or defend. Bossa ball matches consist of three sets, with the first team to score 25 points in each set winning the set. A team must win two out of three sets to claim victory. The sport emphasizes fun, creativity, and sportsmanship, and it can be enjoyed by people of all ages and skill levels. Bossa ball has gained popularity in various countries, including Spain, Brazil, the Netherlands, and the United Arab Emirates, and has been featured in international festivals and events. In addition to being an exciting and engaging sport, bossa ball also provides a great workout, improving cardiovascular fitness, agility, balance, and coordination. The unique combination of elements from different sports and the festive atmosphere make bossa ball a truly one-of-a-kind experience. 4. Zorbing is a recreational activity that involves rolling downhill inside a large, transparent, inflatable ball called a zorb, or orb. The sport was invented in the 1990s by New Zealanders Dwayne van der Slaus and Andrew Akers, who were inspired by the idea of walking on water using inflatable spheres. Zorbing has since gained popularity worldwide and can now be found in numerous adventure parks, resorts, and outdoor events. A typical Zorb is made of flexible plastic, usually PVC or TPU, and consists of two layers, an outer ball and an inner ball. The space between these two layers is filled with air, creating a cushion that absorbs the impact of the ride and protects the rider. The rider is secured inside the inner ball with harnesses or left free to slide around, depending on the type of Zorbing experience. Zorbing can take place on natural grassy slopes, on man-made tracks designed specifically for Zorbing, or even on water, where riders can experience water walking inside a Zorb. Tracks can vary in length, slope, and design, offering different levels of thrill and excitement. Despite its unconventional nature, Zorbing has become a popular activity for people seeking a unique and fun experience. The sport offers a combination of adrenaline, amusement, and a sense of weightlessness that appeals to adventure seekers and families alike. 5. Banzai skydiving is an extreme and highly dangerous form of skydiving that pushes the limits of the sport by adding an extra layer of challenge and risk. It is not recommended for beginners or even intermediate skydivers, as it requires exceptional skill, experience, and composure to successfully complete the stunt. In Banzai skydiving, the jumper first throws their parachute out of the airplane, typically packed in a deployment bag with a pilot chute. After a brief pause, the jumper leaps out of the plane and begins free falling, aiming to catch up with the parachute as it descends. The time between throwing the parachute and jumping varies but is typically a few seconds, which adds to the difficulty and danger of the sport. During freefall, the jumper must maintain control of their body position, speed, and trajectory to successfully intercept the falling parachute. This requires expert knowledge of aerodynamics and precise maneuvering. Once the jumper retrieves the parachute, they must quickly and accurately attach it to their harness and deploy it, all while free-falling at terminal velocity. The goal of Banzai skydiving is to maximize the time spent in freefall while still successfully deploying the parachute and landing safely. This extreme sport is not only a physical challenge but also a mental one, as it demands intense focus, quick decision making, and the ability to remain calm under extreme pressure. Banzai skydiving carries significant risks, and even the most experienced skydivers can face life-threatening consequences if things go wrong. Possible risks include failing to catch the parachute, becoming entangled with the parachute upon retrieval, or deploying the parachute too late, all of which can result in severe injury or death. Given the extreme nature of Banzai skydiving, it is essential that participants be highly experienced and well-trained skydivers. They should also ensure that they are using appropriate and well-maintained equipment and are familiar with emergency procedures in case of a malfunction or other issues. 6. 
Highlining is an extreme and adrenaline-inducing sport that pushes the boundaries of balance, focus, and mental fortitude. It evolved from slacklining, which was developed in the early 1980s by rock climbers in Yosemite National Park, California. While slacklining generally takes place close to the ground, highlining is performed at significant heights, adding an extra element of danger and challenge. Highlines are made from flat, narrow bands of webbing, typically constructed of nylon or polyester, and are anchored between two fixed points. These lines can range from a few meters to several hundred meters in length, and can be suspended at various heights, from tens to hundreds of meters above the ground. The line's flexibility and elasticity cause it to sway and bounce as the highliner walks, demanding exceptional balance and concentration. Highlining locations vary, with some of the most popular sites including natural landscapes like canyons, mountain peaks, and cliffs, as well as urban environments, such as between skyscrapers, bridges, or other man-made structures. These unique locations add to the visual appeal and exhilaration of the sport. Safety is a top priority in highlining. Most highliners wear a safety harness attached to a leash, which is then connected to the slackline itself. This precaution helps prevent injury or death in case of a fall. Despite the use of safety equipment, highlining still demands a strong mental resolve to overcome the fear of heights and maintain focus throughout the walk. Free solo highlining is a more dangerous and controversial form of the sport, in which the highliner chooses not to use any safety equipment. This extreme variation is practiced only by a small number of highly experienced and skilled highliners, as the risk of fatal falls is significantly higher. Highlining requires a combination of physical and mental skills, including balance, body control, and mental fortitude. Many highliners also practice meditation or other mental training techniques to help them remain calm and focused while on the line. The highlining community has grown over the years, with enthusiasts organizing festivals, competitions, and workshops worldwide. The sport has also attracted media attention, with numerous high-profile highline crossings and record-breaking attempts capturing the public's imagination. 7. Cave diving is an extreme and specialized form of scuba diving that involves exploring submerged cave systems. This challenging activity combines the skills of scuba diving with those of caving and requires meticulous planning, specialized training, and strict adherence to safety protocols. Cave diving is not recommended for inexperienced or casual divers, as it carries inherent risks and demands a high level of expertise. Cave divers venture into underwater caves, which can be found in various locations around the world, from freshwater springs and sinkholes to coastal cave systems. These caves can be both horizontally and vertically extensive, with intricate networks of passages and chambers that can reach depths of hundreds of meters. Cave divers follow a set of established safety guidelines, known as the rule of thirds or the rule of sixths. These rules dictate that divers should use one third of their air supply for the inward journey, one third for the outward journey, and reserve the final third for emergencies. In more challenging dives, the rule of sixths may apply, further increasing the safety margin. Moreover, cave divers use a continuous guideline from the cave entrance to their furthest point of penetration, ensuring a reliable path back to the surface. They also employ various line markers and a system of hand signals or light signals for communication. Cave diving has contributed significantly to scientific research, as divers have discovered and documented unique geological formations, underwater ecosystems, and archaeological sites. Despite the inherent risks, cave diving offers a rare opportunity to explore some of the most breathtaking and uncharted underwater environments on the planet. 8. Crocodile bungee jumping is an extreme variation of traditional bungee jumping that adds an element of danger and excitement by having the jump take place above a body of water inhabited by live crocodiles. This activity is designed to provide thrill-seekers with an adrenaline rush by combining the fear of heights with the presence of potentially dangerous animals. Participants in crocodile bungee jumping follow a similar procedure to regular bungee jumping. They are harnessed and attached to a bungee cord, then leap from a platform or structure high above the water. As they plummet towards the crocodile-infested water, the bungee cord stretches and eventually recoils, pulling them back up before they reach the surface. The jumper is left suspended above the water, often just meters away from the snapping jaws of the crocodiles below. The locations for crocodile bungee jumping are typically selected for their natural crocodile populations or in controlled environments where crocodiles are specifically kept for this purpose. Jumpers may be surrounded by a few or several crocodiles, depending on the location and conditions. 
Safety is a major concern in this activity, as it combines the risks associated with both bungee jumping and proximity to dangerous animals. Operators must ensure that equipment is in excellent condition, safety protocols are followed, and staff are well trained in handling emergencies. Participants should be aware of the risks involved and follow all instructions provided by the operator. While crocodile bungee jumping is not as widely practiced as traditional bungee jumping, it has gained attention in recent years due to its extreme nature and the unique experience it offers. It is important to note that this activity is not suitable for everyone, and potential participants should carefully consider the risks involved before deciding to take part in such an extreme and potentially dangerous sport. 9. Ultralight flying is a form of recreational aviation that involves piloting small, lightweight aircraft with minimal equipment and often at low altitudes. These aircraft, known as ultralights, microlights, or light sport aircraft, are designed for simplicity, affordability, and ease of operation, making them accessible to a wider range of aviation enthusiasts. Ultralight aircraft come in various configurations, including fixed wing, weight shift control, trikes, powered parachutes, and powered paragliders. They are typically constructed from lightweight materials like aluminium, composite materials, or fabric, and are powered by small, fuel-efficient engines. Due to their size and weight, ultralights have limited range and speed, making them more suitable for short, local flights. Flying an ultralight aircraft offers a unique and intimate flying experience, as pilots can enjoy the sensation of flight with minimal barriers between them and the environment. The open cockpit design and low altitude flying allow for unobstructed views and a more direct connection with the natural surroundings. In many countries, ultralight flying is subject to specific regulations and licensing requirements that are separate from those governing general aviation. These regulations may include limitations on maximum takeoff weight, engine power, fuel capacity, and speed, as well as restrictions on flying in controlled airspace or overpopulated areas. Pilots may be required to obtain a specific ultralight or light sport aircraft pilot license, which involves completing a training program and passing a practical flight test and written exam. Safety is an important consideration in ultralight flying, as these aircraft have minimal equipment and are more susceptible to weather-related issues and turbulence. Pilots must be knowledgeable about their aircraft's limitations, weather conditions, and local airspace restrictions, and should always follow best practices and safety guidelines. Ultralight flying has grown in popularity among aviation enthusiasts, as it offers an affordable and accessible way to experience the joy of flight. Many pilots enjoy the freedom, simplicity, and connection with nature that ultralight flying provides, and it has become a popular recreational activity for those seeking a unique and exhilarating adventure. 10. Ice climbing is an extreme winter sport that involves ascending ice formations, such as frozen waterfalls, ice-covered rock faces, or glaciers, using specialized equipment and techniques. It is a challenging and physically demanding activity that requires strength, agility, and mental fortitude. Ice climbing is closely related to rock climbing and mountaineering, but with the added challenge of navigating slippery and ever-changing ice conditions. The ice formations climbed in this sport can vary in difficulty and can be either vertical or less steeply inclined. They can be found in various locations around the world, from ice falls in the Canadian Rockies to ice-covered cliffs in Norway. The ephemeral nature of ice makes each climb unique, as formations change with temperature fluctuations and weather conditions. Ice climbing techniques involve using a combination of balance, strength, and precise movements to ascend the ice. Climbers typically kick their crampon-equipped feet into the ice to create footholds and swing their ice axes to create handholds. They must also learn to read the ice and identify the safest and most efficient routes up the formation. Safety is of utmost importance in ice climbing, as the sport carries inherent risks such as falling ice, avalanches, and falls. Ice climbers must be knowledgeable about their equipment and its proper use, as well as how to assess and manage risks related to weather, ice conditions, and avalanche danger. Many climbers participate in formal ice climbing courses or workshops to develop these skills. In addition to being a recreational activity, ice climbing is also a competitive sport, with events and competitions held worldwide. These events typically involve climbers ascending a man-made ice wall or structure within a set time limit with points awarded for speed, style, and difficulty of the route. Ice climbing offers a unique and thrilling challenge for those who seek adventure in cold, icy environments. It demands physical strength, mental focus, and the ability to adapt to ever-changing conditions, making it a rewarding and exhilarating experience for those who are up to the challenge.
And that wraps up our exhilarating journey into the world of extreme sports. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.